So that takes us to our last example. Clarissa and Shauna working together can paint the exterior of a house in six days. So that's the job, painting the exterior of a house. Shauna by herself can complete this job in five days less than Clarissa. How long will it take Shauna to complete the job by herself? This is another type of problem where I think making a table uh, will definitely benefit us. So let's maybe construct one together. This is going to be a table that has four rows and three columns, just to give you a heads up. That perfectly square table right there, huh? <laughs> um, but anyway, <clears throat> I'm going to title the columns. The first column is going to focus on which person. Okay, it's going to focus on uh, the people, um, you know, that are that are part of the problem. The second column is going to be for any time values that we can get out of there, and then the last column. It's going to be uh, representing the amount done after one unit of time. And basically what we'll do is we'll take any time amounts that we can uh, construct and reciprocate them to get the fractions that will be populated in this last column. The first person I'm going to put here is Clarissa and Shauna. And I'd also like to consider them when they work together. In fact, in this first sentence of the problem, it says Clarissa and Shauna uh, working together can paint the exterior of the house in six days. So that actually gives us something that we can put in the very last row in the time column working together. It takes them six days. So I'm going to put six there. So what would that mean about the amount of the job uh, the amount of the job done after just one day? What would that be? I'll keep in mind our constant rate job formula. Okay, so one sixth, yep. So maybe this might help. We'll put x above time and 1 over x above the amount. Now it doesn't state um, explicitly how many days it takes each one of uh, the people to do it individually. Um, it instead gives you know a, a connection between the two time amounts. It says Shauna by herself can complete this job in five days less than Clarissa. So this statement is actually basing Shauna's time on Clarissa's, which they don't really tell us how long it takes Clarissa to do it either. So what I would do is I would maybe assign Clarissa a time value of x, which of course going to mean that the amount done after one day is 1 over x. What could we put for Shauna's time amount? Well, keep in mind it's x minus 5, yep. Right here it says 5 days less than Clarissa. So what that means is that the amount done after one day by Shauna would be given by the expression 1 over x minus 5. Is this all making sense so far? Okay, <clears throat> here's how we're going to 
create an equation. I'm going to write out this uh, subtle but important fact. Clarissa is going to contribute a portion of the 1 -sixth. Shauna is going to contribute a portion of the 1 -sixth as well. And so what, um, what I'm doing is I'm focusing on when they're working together. Okay, so let, let's think about when they're working together. <clears throat> if we take the amount done by Clarissa and add it to the amount done by Shauna, okay, so we're assuming they're working together, each of these two people are going to contribute to the one-sixth that's completed when they're working together. So that actually allows us to get an equation involving the expressions in the last column, namely 1 over x, because that's the part of the job done by uh, Clarissa after one unit of time. And then Shauna's contribution to this 1 sixth is 1 over x minus 5. So long story short, once you have your last column filled out, what you do is you take the uh, fractions for the individuals, you add them together, and you set it equal to um, whatever this expression is. So it's basically, we're assuming that the 1 sixth is split up into 1 over x and 1 over x minus 5. And in making that connection, we end up with a rational equation. OK, before we go to solve it, do you guys have any questions about how it was set up? All right, so let's uh, let's put let's be in the mindset of how to solve a rational equation. It's something we were discussing last week. Um, what you want to do for a rational equation is multiply each part by an LCM. That's going to cancel out all three of these denominators once we've simplified. Now the LCM to use going to be 6x times the quantity x minus 5. And what we'll do with that is we'll put it in front of all three fractions. We'll simplify and then see what kind of equation that we get. Do you guys want to take a moment to simplify that? Go ahead and simplify that, and I'll jump in in just a second so we can check our answers. All right, so the x's cancel out here, leaving behind 6, x minus 5, and 1. I'm going to write that as 6 times quantity x minus 5, plus the x minus 5's cancel, leaving behind 6x times 1. I'm going to write that as 6x, 
And on the right hand side, the sixes cancel out, leaving behind x times x minus five times one. So hopefully that's what you got when you simplified. And we're gonna go a little bit further and clear parentheses to get six x minus 30 plus six x on the left x squared minus 5x on the right. And upon canceling out all these denominators and clearing parentheses, we end up with a quadratic equation. That's because the highest power on x now is a 2. So what I would um, do from here is try to set this quadratic equation to 0 by moving some things over to the right-hand side because if the expression we get after we simplify factors, that's gonna be our quickest way of solving for x. So let's do this first though. Let's combine the two six x's on the left to get 12 x minus 30 equals x squared minus five x. And then we can subtract 12 x from each side as well as add 30. These cancel. We do get zero on the left and on the right, we'll have x squared minus 17 x plus 30. So to see if it factors, we'd wanna come up with numbers that multiply to give us negative 30, but also add up to negative 17. Any uh, recommendations as to what two numbers are gonna work for us there? You do x minus 2 times x minus 15. Now, um, <clears throat> when we have one side completely factored, set equal to 0, you may recall that we set each factor to 0 to solve for x, and that's what we'll do here. And we get a couple of answers, x equals 2 and x equals 15. Now, um, <clears throat> there's actually an issue with one of these values of x. Anybody know what uh, value of x might, you know, cause the issue? Fifteen. All right. So, why, why do you think fifteen might cause a problem for us? I would actually consider the two, because if you look at our table, using x equals two as an answer will make Shauna's time negative three. So she would complete the job in negative three days. And I, I, think, I think it's obvious as to why, you know, we probably wouldn't want to use two. So nice try though. I'm gonna cross that out because it doesn't have any meaning in this setting. So we should probably opt to use the 15 then. But keep in mind what 15 uh, designates. Uh, this designates Clarissa's time. Did it ask for Clarissa's time or did it ask for Shauna's? actually asked for Shauna, right? How could we figure out Shauna's time now that we know Clarissa's time? You got it. Yep. 15 minus 5, because Shauna completes it in five days less, in which case we get 10 days as Shauna's time. And that's the official answer to this problem. And it was all based upon figuring out Clarissa's time first. <laughs> all right, but once we do all the you know grunt work for that, 
it's a real simple matter of just subtracting five from the appropriate value of x and we get Shauna's time.